Montana is one of the best growing environments in the world for barley. Ideal soil, ideal temperature and humidity. Montana has a history of shipping premium agricultural goods outside of state to be processed and value added. That value add can happen here in the state. Basically keep the raw materials here, the revenue here, the business here, and the jobs here. There's no reason that we shouldn't be doing more of that. The vision has been crystal clear from day one. We have a $25 million, 10,000 ton malt facility sitting out back and the market is really ready for what we hope to provide. So what sounds like it started as a, a big sad sob story uh, is actually a really beautiful story. My father was a, a very seasoned agribusiness person in the state of Montana, in the US and beyond. Both my parents born and raised in Butte. My mom is one of 12, my dad one of eight. I went to school in Seattle and kind of flew the coop and all of a sudden 25 years went by and I had a fully formed adult career in technology and um, after my third child was born, we deliberately as a family decided to sort of downshift. And so we picked our family up and moved back to Montana. It was the best decision we ever made. Once Montana's in your blood, it kind of stays. My dad and I started noodling on something we could do together. He wanted a swan song. He was sunsetting his career. I wanted to do something just different, something touch and feel that felt good and more local to me. We started, you know, playing with ideas, bringing both of our experiences to the table. There was this huge opportunity to build a malting facility, a very large industrial sized malting facility in the state of Montana. A malting facility basically means we buy grain from growers and specifically Montana growers. We turn that into malt and then we bring that finished product to our customers. What is malt? Malt is a really important ingredient in beer. Malt is also an important ingredient in distilled products and also many food products. Primarily, when you're talking about malt, we're talking about barley products. There are certainly other types of malt, but for for most purposes, it's barley. We are in a special size category. Basically around the globe, there are the big commodity player malt houses, and those are you know global brands, and they sell to the macro brewers especially. And there are also some very, very small malt houses. They follow the hyper-local model, and they do a lot of very small and special things. Our facility is dead set in the middle the small and special, but at larger scale. Big enough so we can establish consistency, small and nimble enough so that we can produce these smaller batch sizes that are more aligned to the buying sizes of the craft industry. The opportunity is there for us to bring premium Montana uh, value-added products using these premium Montana grains and, turn, and malting them here in our own state. It's ambitious in that it's new and different. And with my dad's deep experience in agribusiness, uh, that was, uh, it was a natural fit. He was able to um, assemble financing and design engineers and, uh, and a whole team and, and set this thing in motion. I was supporting him somewhat in the background. Uh, he had started and launched many businesses before and he loved the scrappiness of starting something that didn't have a playbook. We've been through a lot. Um, we've been challenged. It's not been easy. Finally, we broke ground in May of 2017. Three weeks after we broke ground on construction, he, uh, he had a heart attack and died at 65. Uh, time stopped uh, for my family. Nobody knew what to do. This was his vision, his baby we decided to keep moving. But then it was, uh, where are we and who's gonna lead this? There's no playbook for what we're doing and it's extremely expensive and there was a lot of risk involved. The board quickly assembled. We went one by one around the table and said, who's the right person to do this? 
my family is part of the brand, and so it just, it had to be me. I could hear my dad saying, <laughs> no, what's not off your nose, <laughs> dry your eyes, stand up and take a swing. So that's what we did. The goodness in people was really, really evident. And the people in Butte Silverbell County, frankly, turned themselves inside out with goodness to help us. We couldn't have done this anywhere else, I don't think, with this, um, with this type of success so far. Uh, the community really, really enveloped us in my dad's vision, and that's allowed us to keep moving. The people who have weathered this with us are flat out some of the bravest people I've ever met. It's more than a job for every person here. It's personal, it's purposeful, and we think it's important. And uh, the facility that we've built together is one of a kind and amazing. It was, you know, obviously with my dad's passing, very, very hard. I learned really early on, really early on when I stepped into this role, um, that it was scary. Nobody had all the answers. You know, sometimes uh, you just gotta have some guts. And that can take you further than experience or money or anything else. The more you practice using your guts, the more comfortable things become. What's ironic about this is the fact that my dad and I had actually ever planned to work together because it was my dad and I who used to butt heads growing up. As an adult now, I can see it's because we were similar, um, extremely stubborn and bullheaded. But we got to work together for two years on this project before he passed, and I couldn't be more grateful. You know, if you would have told me when I was a kid, I was just like my dad. I don't know how I would have liked that, but as an adult, I think it's just the greatest compliment. I don't know that at the point that he passed, he had any idea how big this was gonna be. I think he'd be overwhelmingly proud of the Butte community for stepping up in such a big way. And I think he would be just giddy, excited about our future.